so we are going to start the presentation. Uh, today's topic is uh, the seven things. I hope now everybody is thinking out of the box and doing different things, going and meet customers, getting their feedback. So uh, before I start uh, the presentation, I would like to know any any idea about seven things. Anybody googled and found anything? Anybody? Didn't Google anyone? So uh, it's a film actually, uh, <laughs> Telugu film. Uh, and also there is an uh, apartment complex in Sri Lanka that is also called Seven Cents. But all that I found after that I came up with these words. So before that I didn't know those things. So uh, actually uh, Seven Cents, I, ha I have two meanings uh, on this presentation. Uh, one, uh, I think I will reveal at the end of the presentation. And the second meaning of the Seven Cents will be revealed on another presentation, which I don't know I will do very soon. So, Basically, uh, even though it's a topic is seven cents, which is more broader in my definition, uh, and also there's another broader definition, uh, something called Internet of Things. Uh, we all know the internet, which is today whatever, whatever we have, which is most of the time uh, Internet of Computers uh, in one way. So, but Internet of Things uh, are more broader than that. It is uh, discussing about many things, about societies, people, uh, devices available in the environment. So all those things fall under Internet of thing, uh, Things topic. So let me uh, go and have a more detailed definition. This is a definition that I grabbed from the internet. It says, uh, Internet of Things is an ecosystem of technologies monitoring the status of physical objects, capturing meaningful data, and communicating that information through IP networks to software applications. So whatever the device, whatever available, if they capture any information, anything meaningful uh, attached to physical objects, and if they are communicating to internet and via the application, if we get any feedback, then anything fall under that category, this comes under internet of things. Uh, so with this definition, at least can somebody speak and tell me whether you understand anything and can I have some examples on this? Internet of things other than computers. Any other example for Internet of things? So this is Friday evening. I don't want to have this more than 30 minutes. So and also this is not a presentation. I hope it will be a discussion. So any understanding other than computer, laptop, mobile, those whatever fall under uh, computer, anything else? These beacons? Ah, uh, yeah. Things like cameras. Yes. Anything else? Tsunami alarm system. Tsunami alarm beacons. Beacon alarm. For the tsunami. Tsunami alarm systems. Satellite images. Sorry? Satellite images. Satellite images. What else? Any, any device that we are getting information. Yeah. It could be uh, information in a uh, microprocessor in a car yeah. that's submitting information to a cloud service that yeah. gets processed somewhere. We are like a patient who's having a chip. Yeah. Or even a phone, right? Other than those. Uh, other than <laughs> security systems and stuff. Yeah. Uh, other than the beacon, that's, that's I think something that we know uh, in recent times. Anything else? that we know on other than those devices and things. Anyone else know like some applications somebody has developed and they are using in the day-to-day -day life? That is fall under this category. Beacon is, the PayPal beacon is one example. So similar things. Motor resistance? Yeah. RFID. <coughs> Anything something resistance. big? Sorry? I, uh, Nike has a wristwatch. Yes. Captures your Daily activities and sends yeah. from. And uh, this uh, Samsung S5, which comes with the heartbeat monitor. So I have few examples. Before going to that one, uh, these are some of the other definitions. Actually, if you look at the Internet of Things, this is uh, somewhere like even start the word coins at around uh, 1999, and uh, different big players like Cisco, CIS Cisco. 
and IBM, that sort of big players, as well as everyone in the world now looking on these technologies. Internet of Things, it's nothing new, like the web, it is similar to the web, so, but it is having some more broader definition. So Cisco says, it's not Internet of Things, it's Internet of Everything. Whatever available in the world, it is Internet of Everything. And uh, it is the latest wave of the Internet. Uh, connect all the physical objects that is can be connected to the internet uh, with lesser battery life, uh, lesser connectivity, comfort, efficiency. With all those limitations, uh, they are trying to connect everything to the internet. Uh, few examples as we discuss those are the <coughs> smart devices. And actually like uh, when we talk about internet of things, People are like uh, dreaming about things. We saw like Dirk comes in here and dreaming about switching off light and <laughs> leaving the places. So those kind of smart applications and even uh, some smarter things like if somebody eats something, we send the chip out with the food. So when they leave, we know what what is what they ate. So we do the automatic calculation. So those sort of innovations over there. Uh, so those also fall under this category. So there is no limit to the imaginations, uh, as Dirk did. And uh, there were some other people who also did the same. Star Trek is one example, uh, started from a long time back. They were looking at the world where like Star Trek computer, has anybody seen the Star Trek computer? You can speak to that one, that will respond. You can touch the things, you can view the uh, like physical objects. Those are the uh, Star Trek computer, whatever the technologies they came. And Google also following, want to do that one. So Google also has developed some Star Trek computer. Up through Chrome. <laughs> we'll announce some interesting upgrades to their search technology here. Uh, basically, it's doing some more stuff with natural language and can actually anticipate what you're going to ask based on your history and the question you just asked. So if you say, where is the Golden Gate Bridge? And it'll show you and then it'll say, well, how far is it from here? And it'll know exactly what you're talking about. Now, that's sort of the basic level of this technology. Uh, and it, they can actually take it into some pretty cool places. How tall do you have to be to ride the Giant Dipper? You must be at least four feet, three inches tall to ride Giant Dipper. This is sort of taking it to the next level. Correct. Taking the next level and a lot of things that are really cool are some pronouns that are going to be, we can show you here. So it, it's pretty smart. Okay, Google. Who is Barack Obama? According to Wikipedia, Barack Hussein Obama too is the 44th and current president of the United States, the first African American to hold the office. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. How tall is he? Barack Obama is six feet one inch tall. Okay, Google. Who is his wife? Barack Obama's spouse is Michelle Obama since 1992. Is the idea to basically have this available across platform, um, you know, Google, mobile, uh, laptop, wherever? So it'll be available on mobile and then uh, available in Chrome with laptops and desktops. Chrome, not just uh, Chrome OS, but if you have running the Chrome browser. Correct, and Linux too as well, and a couple others. Who is Pete Cashmore? According to Wikipedia, Pete Cashmore is the CEO and founder of the popular blog Mashable, a Technorati top 10 blog worldwide. Okay, Google. Where was he born? Pete Cashmore was born in Scotland. Okay, Google. How old is he? Uh. It was interesting with our queries about uh, our CEO that, you know, depending on which questions we asked exactly, sort of your results may vary. Where was he born? It's just giving me a list of results. Um, you know, didn't understand the context. But it's very interesting that depending on the context and, uh, of your search and exactly how you word it and what order the questions go in, um, it can give you different results. It'll take you know, time for it to all function as it should, but natural language and, and voice recognition is, is a very complex system. 
And what about people with accents, different languages? Um, is it, in Britain, will it be all right, Google? <laughs> all right, Google. Um, so we're working on a lot of internationalization of all of these features as well. So um, be on the lookout for those type of launches. Is it only U.S. when, well, it's actually not even U.S. now, the new stuff in Chrome. Yeah, the new, um, the new stuff right now hasn't been launched yet, uh, but it will be very soon, but it's, it's U.S. only. Okay, cool, and then just over time it'll be over, it'll spread. Over time, very, very soon time, so uh, as far as when it comes to the mobile, the mobile piece of it. That, my friends, is the power of the new search experience that we are building at Google, and it will change how you and I experience this beautiful journey when we Google right now, we need to type the word that we want. But with this technology, we can ask the question, the Google follows the pattern. So uh, the girl that she first asked, who is Barack Obama, then asked who, uh, how old he is. So then uh, Google knows, like, the first question was Obama, and the next question is related to Obama. So he go back and search the history and find that that's the Obama age, they're asking. So gave the Obama uh, age. And when asked why, Again, it knows it's Obama's wife, so it's give some answer. <laughs> so this is something closer that we have. This is, I think, 2013 in a Google I.O. presentation. Uh, somebody already has, and I know Jintek has it in this application. Most of the time, he's saying, OK, Google, OK, Google, which bug come next? Likewise, he's Googling. I have seen that one. He's not here, I think. Looking for bugs, I guess, up upstairs. It's available in Vita? It is available in Chrome, uh, even my Chrome I have. Uh, that's uh, Google, and uh, we know like all the scientists, Google is taking them there. Whoever available in the world, how much they want, they pay it and take to Google. Not on the people, Google even bought the Nest. So they actually, Nest came with the thermostat. Uh, thermostat is the one control the AC. So in the home device, in, in our country, we don't normally we have only ACs, but in other countries, they have heaters and combinations are there. Uh, so people normally use thermostat in US to control like uh, for Monday evening, since nobody is there, it's going to off. Uh, Friday night, if nobody is going there, it's going to off. Likewise, they're going to program it. And there are some complex uh, thermostats available, but they have found that 90% of those thermostats don't use because they are either complex or people does not know how to use them. So because of that, uh, Nest came with their thermostat that's able to learn from whatever the configuration that we do. We can uh, configure that within one week. So then it will follow the pattern and try to understand how we want. Uh, some of the features are there similar to that. Alright, so... But here's... Okay, most people don't really think about their thermostat. But here's an eye-opening fact. The thermostat on your wall controls half your energy bill. A lot of that energy is wasted, usually when the heat or AC stays on after you've left the house. Programmable thermostats were supposed to help, but there's a hitch. They're incredibly complicated. According to one study, 90% of people don't program them properly and they all lost the EPA's Energy Star rating in 2009. But what if a thermostat could program itself around your life, not the other way around? The Nest Learning Thermostat does. Nest learns when you change the temperature. So treat it like a normal thermostat. Turn it up when you're cold and down when you're hot. Nest will remember your temperature adjustments and use an array of sensors, sophisticated algorithms, and the processing power of a computer to help it learn. We call it Nest Sense. After a few days, you'll be adjusting Nest less. Within a week, it will put all it's learned into a schedule for your home. Nest will begin noticing when you're gone and will turn on auto away to avoid heating or cooling an empty house. To make the biggest impact on your energy bill, Teach Nest good energy-saving habits in the first week. Remember to turn the temperature down at night and when you leave the house. You can control Nest from anywhere using your laptop, smartphone, or tablet. Soon, you won't have to remember. Nest will do it for you. And as Nest learns from you, you can learn from Nest. The Nest Leaf will guide you to more energy savings. Changing the temperature just one degree can reduce your energy use by up to 5%. Check your energy history to see how much you saved. 
you'll see if your temperature changes, the weather, or auto away saved you the most. So maybe it's time to think about your thermostat. Actually, Google turned, uh, sorry, Apple turned down the Nest motto, I think, but Google went and bought the Nest. So uh, these are a few examples that uh, we, we can find in the latest uh, industry. And uh, if we th think about what is fall under this category, this is a uh, Beacon research. They came up with uh, some industry analysis and found out uh, these sort of industries are there, these sort of uh, devices can be there in, in the market. And uh, people, if you want, uh, let's say for, for example, we are more into the consumer industry uh, and even for merchants. More scale up version. So here we can find the consumer and home industry. Uh, people are looking for some applications like infrastructure application, awareness, safety, uh, convenience, and environment control. So the sensors that they, we can find out these informations are digital cameras, power system, blah blah blah. Everything is listed down there. So you can see there are thousands of consume, thousands of sensors already we have. All these already. Uh, available like cameras and all those already available sensors. So if we can get those information to internet, it will be huge information because currently all the information human are feeding to the system most of the time. Other than some of the application generation generated data, these data will flood the internet. So today whatever the infrastructure available will not be enough. Uh, And this is from health in the industry and some of the uh, sensors already we have like uh, glasses, lens, collars, tongue, heart, head, heart rate monitoring, undervalables, I don't know, shirts, available, clothes, things are there. And even like they are thinking like the chair is a communicator that know like if I sit there then uh, everybody knows like I am on that seat. The sensor is there and if you can detect that it is me, so then everyone knows where I am seated. So nobody is looking on my seat there, the dedicated place. Everyone knows whether I am playing TT or window piece or not. <laughs> and, uh, and even even with the chair, the, the pattern that you sit, then it can alert you whether you are sitting in proper uh, posture or not. So likewise, if you look at everywhere, so they are trying to get those devices, this internet of things concept, the people who are working around that one, the bodies working around that one, they are trying to get all those information somehow connected to the internet. So let everyone decide like uh, whatever they want. So because like we know like whatever the data we have, we know what we are going to do, some BI analysis, find out who is the best, uh, best customer, top customer, everything, right? So if we have all the other information like how much health they have, who is eating, which age people, who, what are the ages that people eat in different foods, so we can do so many things. So that's why they are trying to go into this market. So today, actually, I will, after just capturing this information, like broader sense, I'm just trying to go down because like, uh, and find out some protocols, connectivity, how do they do those things. Uh, but why we do all those things? Does it matter? Uh, any questions? Uh, any answers on this? Do we need to worry about this one? Because we are selling a POS device, we have almost uh, a, a sea of customers to grab. We have only 1,000 customers, we have 100,000 of customers to grab. Do we need to worry about this? Any answers? Yes. Shanil, I will come to Shanil later. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else just think, us, think about this? Do we need, uh, at least as developers, do we need this? Yes. Do we need to, like, because uh, we can identify the pattern, and the pattern, pattern recognition makes us, uh, like, uh, we can improve the things from the most, uh, we can improve for the most demanded things. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
when we identify the pattern, we can identify the like, like inside. So you can, some, you can identify uh, which customers we uh, what are the things that we have ordered mostly. So okay, I will uh, I will uh, answer my own question. Uh, we know the art graduates and science graduate difference, right? So, in my understanding, if you don't follow this, in coming future, we will, the, whoever, whatever, doing software development, will become art graduates who are out there today, and you will not be a science graduate that is available today. So, one next, uh, I have some proof on that. This is from Forward Thinking. Your next refrigerator may know more about your diet than your doctor. <laughs> How many objects do you have that are connected to the internet? About a decade ago, you probably would have said one or maybe two if you were an early adopter of smartphone technology. But today, oh, well, I've got a work computer, I've got a personal computer, I've got a tablet, I've got a smartphone, I've got a video game console, I've got a media player, I've got a smart TV, I even have a smart refrigerator. Now, extend this trend outward and what do we get? Well, it's estimated by 2020, there will be 50 billion objects connected to the internet. Now that's billion with a B. It's also estimated by the US Census Bureau that there will be 7.6 billion people alive at that time. So that means that for every person, there will be 6.6 .6 objects connected to the internet. We're talking about a world blanketed with billions of sensors. These sensors are taking information from real physical objects that are in the world and uploading it to the internet. It's a world where your environment transforms as you walk through it because technology that you may not even be aware of is monitoring your every move. It's a world that's constantly changing all around us due to these sensors and the internet and we call it the internet of things. Let's stroll into the living room of the future. Now, immediately, this room identifies you and taps into a cloud-based profile of preferences like climate control, music, lighting, and decor. Had a long day at work? The room knows, based on the calendar app on your phone and biosensors that detect the stress via blood pressure and heart rate. So it turns off the rockabilly surf guitar you usually listen to and switches to a more soothing classical music from environmental sensors outside and maybe even worn within your clothing itself, it knows it was snowing earlier. So the climate control begins to crank up the heat in anticipation as you walk through the door. Now, on the software side, we're talking about algorithms that are so sophisticated, they may be able to predict what you want before you know you even wanted it. So when you walk to the refrigerator, it tells you not only what's in there, it tells you what you can make with the stuff you already have. And it's already telling you what's inside and what's the perfect meal based upon your mood, your activity level, and maybe even, well, your weight loss plan for some of us. As for how many objects could be connected to the internet, well, consider this. The latest version of internet protocol, IPv6, creates more potential addresses than there are atoms on the surface of the Earth. So we're gonna live in a world completely filled with sensors, with data, reacting to us, changing every moment dependent upon our needs. I'm no longer going to be asking you, hey, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite music? I'm going to ask you, what's your reality like? I know what mine is when I walk into my house, how the world reacts to me, but how does it react to you? This is more than philosophy. It's more than technology. It is altering reality as we know it. And it's all regulated by the Internet of Things. Okay, just one, uh, one thing from that video, like uh, with the IPv6, we are going to get IP addresses. That is more than uh, when we count the atoms in the world. Whole earth. So what they are telling is like whoever having IP will get whole IPv4 range in when we have the IPv6. But we don't like the transition is not that fast. You know, some telco waves like so, a lot of players like uh, moving their applications to IPv6, but it's still not uh, many other players because of that. Uh, because of the backward compatibility, some of the some of the time like because like people are more uh, comfortable with IPv4, they don't want to change to IPv6. Uh, that is uh, why we need IPv6 and uh, those things we can discuss later. But Shanil, if you want, why we need this. Uh, tools and we need to be more aware about the internet of things. What do you want to say? Like, 
you said like in the previous yeah, answer, but why? But he said that's true because uh, every all devices are getting connected now. So I don't know when you saw this recently, all Tesla cars are going to have Wi-Fi in the car by standard, right? So that means there's GPS, uh, uh, internet, 3G device in in every Tesla car. So imagine what you can do there, right? You can watch movies, you can do internet, you can do a lot more. And soon every car will have wireless standard inside the car. We have diagnostics, the car details, everything will be transmitted. Um, you know, we are living in a you know a stone age right now. What our kids are going to see. 10 15 years, virtually every device we have cars to bridges to everything will be connected. There is one problem though, those days the, the, the connectivity problem is related to the uh, device receiving and transmitting, which is typically pretty big. Yeah. Right? So you can't put that in every small device. But when you have a wireless house, it, that device doesn't have to be very big, it can be small. The, the SIM card and so on, because you are transmitting in a small range. So that will transmit to a, a router that can transmit to, a, to the internet and up and down. So, so we have Bluetooth or some recording flashlight in your car? Yeah. So that's the dangerous thing. So wife know how much, what's the speed, where you go and all those things. <laughs> those are privacy problems also there. I don't know about Chanel. That's the same answer actually like uh, Internet of Things, there are some bodies working on the same concept actually, the, the issue that you raised. Currently the connectivity is very less uh, because of the Bluetooth or some of the whatever, the whatever the features or technologies we have, there are some limitations. So because of that people are trying to enhance the protocols that we have available uh, and get to our, all whatever the possible things to connect it. Uh, this is the evaluation of uh, Internet of Things. Initially, we had documents, some web pages. Uh, then uh, we went to commerce and did some payments and things in the internet. We have applications like ERP and things. Then came the people in the internet via social media and things. That is called 2.0 basically. Then uh, it is Internet of Things. That's the next evolution of internet. So this is another description about uh, evaluation. Initially, we had index uh, everything so we try to use index and identify where other things like directories uh, then we try to take the world into online give the internet everywhere and try to get that is where we are at Sri Lanka and uh, take the then we try to get the take the control of uh, internet like we just say like do this thing like autopilot and all those we are just trying to take the uh, just control and let the others do like robotic and robotic can all uh, then uh, we are just trying to let the things to talk each other. Uh, so sensors can sense, uh, discuss another sensor and decide like this is what happening. Actually the autopilot is something similar to that one. Uh, then the next thing is uh, letting them become intelligent. So that's the next step actually the evaluation that we are looking at here. Facebook is trying to create an autonomous uh, uh, computer that can think itself and feel. So that will be the next stage actually that we are going to get. When we look at the Internet of Things, there are many things. We need uh, hardware like sensors, actuators, processors, storage, because like when everything connected, infrastructure matters. And then we need the software like, uh, like Google had, NLP, natural language processors, voice recognizing, and some other applications on top of these applications, uh, these whatever the available hardware and information. And more importantly, today's issue is the network and uh, communication. Even the chair is there, we don't know how to power that one, how to give power to every chair, and then get the sensors activated, how let them communicate, you know, wireless, how is strong in our office, so, so likewise. Uh, the connectivity is key. So that's the current stage, actually, the internet of things are. Not only the physical connection, but even the human connection. If you look at the evaluation, it's the fourth stage actually we get actually people involved, social media comes. But when it comes to uh, internet of things, it's in the first place it should be the people. Uh, 
and uh, there will be machine to machine communication, physical communication, people to machine and machine to people. Those sort of complex communication scenarios also will be there. Uh, so this is the protocol actually currently, this is one protocol available to communicate those information. Uh, we have Ethernet on uh, this side, this is normal our TCP IP stack and that is the IP smart object protocol suit. Uh, we have IP v 4 V6, TCP IP, HTTP, those are the protocols that we are familiar today. But when it comes to Internet of Things, we can use those things, I will explain some of the things later. So we are going to use some different uh, technology stack, even on the network layer and even above that. So we have six so VPAN, WPAN, UDP, which is something known, and COIP. Why does it have to change? Uh, I will explain. So IPv6 is clear, right? Uh, in this stack, uh, this six mean on that side, this six mean is same IPv6 there with some small changes. Much, you know? much more IP addresses. Much more IP addresses. Uh, and also better security, plug and play support currently is not there unless the DHCP is there. And optimization and also real time communication sometimes is not there. And flow control and things are not there in IPv4. That is provided in IP6, IPv6. So uh, even security and things we don't need to worry about after that. It will be provided by the layer, layer itself, not the layers above like currently we have. Uh, so IPv6 is mandatory if we are thinking about Internet of Things. And uh, then the 6 low VPAN. Uh, this is the today world, like uh, this gateway is separated from the sensor network from the internet. That the sensor network is the home that actually we talk about. There we have some uh, low bandwidth, uh, low communication, uh, low capability devices. But this side when it comes to internet, we know PCs, mobile devices and things. They can use easy whatever the available protocol today. So low VPAN uh, is the protocol. Low VPAN is the protocol that comes uh, in the sensor network in the first place. It is the low power wireless personal area network. It's a personal area network, not a LAN or anything. It's a, not even LAN, it's a personal area network protocol. Uh, this is used for the smallest devices that, that is available or even low power devices. Uh, and even limited processing capabilities. We know like if we, if we take a chair, it doesn't have any processing power or anything, it does not have even power. Sometimes if we take some small chips, uh, like the one that we ate when we have the food, that time we ate a sensor, maybe RFID or something, but that does not have any processing power or maybe not live for longer. So this protocol is going to address those things because uh, if we go to IPv6, it has large address space. It needs its 128 bit large space and the devices need much power to process that one. Because of that, they're going to switch to this one. And uh, and also, there is a restriction on IPv6, at least, uh, that is, a packet should be at least 1280 bytes. That is too much to process on IP, uh, on small devices. Because of that, they are going to, this new protocol is going to introduce a minimum limit of 127 bytes. And address resolution, they're going to change from 1 to 8, not even 32, even a device, a fan can decide whether it's 16 bit or 8 bit or anything. So this protocol is going to resolve, resolve that one. Because uh, when we talk about 1 to 8, it's again difficult to process for a, a small device. And uh, flexibility, because of those things, uh, we can't use IPv6. In a pan, we have to use the low pan, 6 low pan. And UDP is uh, not, it used here because uh, the devices are not going to always connect it because sensors may come and go offline. So we can't guarantee the reliability. But UDP, this most of the time we need the communication, proper communication. Because of that, UDP use, it's the same UDP protocol. Some have developed RUDP, some of the enhancement also there for the UDP protocol. Uh, that's I don't think I need to explain much. Then is the most uh, Important layer. This is the application layer. If you look at uh, HTTP layer, is matched to the COAP layer. That's a parallel layer between HTTP and this Internet of Things. So it's a constraint application protocol. It says it's a constraint application protocol. 
there are limited memory capacity processing power available. This protocol is required because like if you know even rest, whatever, it's a text-based protocol, it takes uh, much memory, much capacity, processing power, pass, to even pass uh, uh, HTTP request, it takes a lot of power. To avoid that one, this new protocol is defined, that is a binary protocol, but it is developed parallel to uh, COIP because like uh, if you look at there, this gateway is going to convert all HTTP traffic to COIP. So that external device can communicate with the sensors and even sensors can uh, send data to external device, then COIP request is going to convert to HTTP request. So because of that, COIP has developed uh, using the REST protocol, REST guidelines, like GET and all those REST flow. Uh, it's a constraint uh, because basically simple to decode and target 8-bit microprocessors, not the higher end stuff. 8-bit mi microprocessor is the one that going to use this protocol. And uh, CO mean like constraint. A mean for application, they are going to use like COIP slash slash my sensor room temperature max. Likewise, you can get access to the application. My sensor will understand that's my home. Go to room number one, get the temperature, get the temperature sensor, and find the maximum value. So they're going to follow the same restful uh, protocol on COAP, uh, like get for reads, put post, delete for mutations. And P4, uh, they will protocols basically the protocol that I mentioned early, like uh, UDP, uh, VPAN6, and those are the protocols that are going to be used along with this COIP protocol. Uh, it is this low, restful, low header overlay, URI based concept. So, similar to the rest, COIP will be developed on sensor based network. In summary, uh, today web services, you say IP, DCP, it is from hundreds to thousand bytes. If you look at today's web, but uh, the things like small sensors and those, those will be on tens bytes because they won't go, because if we ask the current temperature, it will send one byte with the current temperature because it will be from even from Kelvin, it will be 256 to something. So we can use one byte, one uh, one byte to get the temperature. So they don't need that much space because hundreds because of that, this new stack is dual. So six low band UDP CO T E X I. So. Uh, in summary, what I discussed was like what is Internet of Things, where are the Internet of Things today, why we need to worry about that one, and the most difficult problem today is getting them connected, powering them, and to get them connected, what are the protocols available today, uh, and some parallels, how are we going to connect both the Internet world and the Internet of Things world. Uh, Next question is smartphones now. So if you Google smartphones, there is a company that sells uh, post devices that is called smartphones, but that's not what I'm meaning here. So normal application, if something we call an application, a smart application, if, can, if it can grab data and communicate it to central servers or something. So smart, normally like whatever the process that they're uh, dreaming, that's, that's a smartphones. So, are we going to get it? Anybody ready to go there and grab, grab it? Uh, actually, seven cents. Why I call it seven cents? We have five sensors. You know, like those five sensors. Uh, we have six cents, right? Anybody know six cents? Six cents is intuition. Yes. Everybody know intuition. What is right? Okay, I didn't know. <laughs> Somebody not so I assume. No, like normally like we feel like we that's the right thing to do sometimes. That's intuition, that's the sixth sense, that is feel to our mind. Seventh sense, that is these devices going to get information and suggest that what, what we need to do next. It's not the like the way that we are going to sit is going to define. Like they say I hey you are sitting in the wrong posture, change your posture to this one. And if I sit for one hour, it will say, hey, you have sit for more than one hour, go and have a DD and something. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I call it six cents, so, sorry, seven cents. Uh, that is going beyond 
uh, human limitation and it will be like uh, go to us. Like it will tell like this is the opportunity, this is the opportunity to market, to go to the market, likewise. Uh, that's why I call it seven cents. That's one meaning and there's another meaning for the seven cents. That is for a team. Uh, that is going to follow uh, something on this angle on leap set. There's a team who is a, a secret team until they find something they won't reveal their names and things. Uh, I know how to coordinate with them so you can, if anybody interested to go in this line, uh, you can contact me. But there's a team who is secretly working to get something which can work with post and add the value to customers and merchants. Excellent. That's the, that's the second uh, second uh, meaning. So if anybody interested to learn about these things and uh, is there, if you have any idea like this can be uh, connected with our post and uh, can enhance the customer feeling, merchant feeling or even, even if we can get more comfortable with this, uh, anybody can contact me uh, and uh, we can do something uh, interesting. So that's it on today's presentation. Any questions? Uh, can take up. Can we uh, get the devices? Uh, like uh, some of the devices available. Like the uh, gateway is a router, right? Yeah. yeah. The routers, the VP6 protocol, wireless. Those devices. are still on uh, software level. We don't need the hardware. In software level, we can configure those things. Even these, uh, all the protocols we mentioned, currently at uh, uh, software level. They don't have go on and define at the application level, even Spotify. They are still on the level of uh, internet, not on this side. Okay. So, so they, they must be having these yeah. small devices, sensors, all that yeah. uh, in beta on these protocols? Not yet. Uh, I didn't find it. Well, on the same protocols, how is the security? Is there any difference or the same security uh, can be implemented? This actually, if we look at these protocols, they are going to be in a house, normally PAN, personal area network. So because of that, uh, there won't be much, because like inside the car, likewise. So there, there won't be much security threats, but they are looking at, at least looking to get the IPv6 security into uh, VPAN6. So at least that layer is there to start with. So it's with the less security, right? Because of the maybe. It's still these are under development. Uh, some of the parallel network stacks also there. Some other people, some proprietary protocols also there. Any more questions? Uh, if that's the case, that's it. And I hope that uh, Seventh Sense team will bring something to us. Thank you.